I live and work in a commercial world, it's something very structured. It becomes a bit clinical, almost at times a bit cynical. I went into it to have an escape from the commercial realities of life, the pressure to succeed. The Cheltenham Gold Cup is the ultimate test, the ultimate arena. It's an anvil of dreams. You've got the absolutely established stars ridden by the absolute ultimates, the McCoys and Walshes of this world, who are the best riders over a fence that have ever lived. And there was Sam Welly Cohen as a completely full-time amateur. By full-time amateur, I mean he's got a full-time job. It was a, a race of heroes of racing, and sometimes you can feel daunted by that. But then you think, well, if I'm daunted, I shouldn't be here. That's not to say that you're as good. That's to say that on that horse, on that day, you're capable of winning. Three and a quarter miles, this clash of generations here. The 2011 Cheltenham Gold Cup, and they're away. And you're trying to balance the advantage of not hitting the front too early with the risk of leaving it to the last minute trying to get that tactic and the combination of being too cavalier and too cautious right is a split second decision but one that can change your life they race towards the final turn corno star on the inside of them and they fight again at cheltenham the young horse long run is trying to fight back in third place corno star from denver and here comes long run on the outside three in the air together what a finish over the last it's just everything this is where it all comes together or not this is the moment that that it's all been about. Here comes the final fence. Long Run takes over. Long Run's younger legs are taking him clear and racing up the hill. It's Long Run and the amateur Sam Wadey Cohen. Long Run, long on talent. The younger legs are going to prevail and Long Run lifts the Gold Cup. Until you cross that line, you don't know for sure that you've done it. And then it's a sort of sort of moment of total chaos as everything takes over and the roar of the crowd sort of becomes real. Sam Wadey Cohen, the first amateur for 30 years to win the Cheltenham Gold Cup. It's that sort of something that you don't really dare dream of. Well, I'm joined by Robert Whaley Cohen. Robert, proud father doesn't really begin to get there, does it? Doesn't even start to get there. I mean, to have a runner in the Gold Cup's an honour. And it's written by your son's a dream, and to win it is beyond anything. No more race goes saying, put a proper jockey on it now. Uh, if they have that problem, then they are very sad. And the winning jockey, Mr. Sam Whaley Cohen. <laughs> You wouldn't have known, you wouldn't have had, a, had an inkling that, that he was an amateur against two of the top professionals. He showed himself to be as good a rider as anybody that day. It's quite an unusual position to be in. I mean, one weekend, you're riding in front of 600 million people on the biggest possible stage in racing. The next weekend, you're running in front of 600 people. I never went into racing for the, for the glamour and the girls. I went into racing because I enjoyed galloping racehorses and jumping fences. And that's what point to pointing is. It's very much sort of welly boots and, and, and rugs over the shoulders to keep warm. So sort of traditional picnic in the pissing rain is, is the point to point. The jockeys are sort of farmers and, and accountants and, and land surveyors. And, and so it's a much more amateur environment where you know, people go back to their day job uh, on Monday morning. The truth is that I never in a hundred years would have believed I'd have ridden in the Gold Cup. As an amateur, there's no logical reason why you should get a ride ahead of a Tony McCoy or a Ruby Walsh, because at the end of the day, that's what they do all day, every day.
what sort of took it from the point to point field of going out and having fun to actually the, the dream is the possibility was riding for dad. second you see a horse, you allow yourself to dream. We saw Long Run with a three-year-old at Autoy in France. He was this sort of magnificent animal, full of presence, full of character and physically very impressive. It was sort of almost immediate, that's the horse. If you could ever get a horse, that's the horse. And from that moment, it felt like it was the beginning of something. You get opportunities in life. Some you make yourself and some get given to you. And you have to decide what you do with those opportunities. At times you think, oh, I don't want to get out of bed. It's pouring with rain, it's dark, it's cold, it's wet. And then you think, you know, this is a gift and, and to waste that gift is, is a sacrilege. So get up and, and get on. You can only ride horses for a very short time. It's a young man's sport. So there's no good saying, what I really love doing is riding races, and I'm going to put my business career on hold while I wait for that. So Santa has to make it work, both of them at the same time. Oh, happy birthday. I have to say. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Not yet. Thank you. That's actually all right. Take the first day. Thank you. Trying to fit all the things in that Sam tries to do is a real challenge. You have to really work out how to spend every minute of every hour. Somebody said the clue uh, to Sam, of course, is he's trying to lead two lives. He's trying to lead Thomas's and his. Thomas is my younger brother, and he was very much part of, of the riding. He was always a bit, bit loose in the saddle, and he didn't really care, and he was never very stylish, and he didn't really care. He just was having fun, and, uh, and that taught us all a lot. Probably the first good thing that, that happened to, to me and to the family as a, as a whole after Thomas died was found on the back of a horse. We were last of 25 horses and somehow she sort of, it was almost like she'd found inspiration and, and started galloping past horses. And her victory sort of pulled us together as a family and reminded us that, that there are good things that can happen as well as the bad things. That was uh, uh, nine months after my uh, son Thomas died, so it was enormously emotional and fantastic uh, for all of us, and an enormous pleasure and, and, and tears all round, so that was great. When you lose someone that you love, you realise that there are bad things and then there are really bad things. When you put that in the context of, of everyday life, you say, hey, what's the worst that can happen to me? So go out there and give every opportunity your best shot. Amateur, nowadays, is used in a, a derogatory sense. He's very amateur, and I think what Sam has done is put the word back into where it should be, which is, at its best, it is a mo a, a mass mat. It's, it's a person who loves it. Thomas's initials in my saddle remind me not to take it too seriously. Win, lose or draw, he'd have loved the Gold Cup and he'd have loved the excitement of, of lining up for another one. Samba's got something on his plate. 
No amateur in the history of the sport has ever won the Gold Cup twice, let alone back to back. If they do it again, they become not just racing immortality, but it's whole sporting immortality. You could be at the start of something extraordinary. Well, welcome to Haydock's buzzing betting ring. They say it's wide open. They're looking forward to taking on Long Run. In the offices, though, the two... You go there thinking it's a stepping stone towards the King George, which is a stepping stone towards the Gold Cup. You also go there knowing that you're facing one of the greatest horses of all time. Porto Star was christened L'Extra Terrestre, the phenomenon. He is unique. I mean, no horse has done what he's done. Is he your horse of a lifetime? He is. He's the horse of my career, and uh, he's a privilege to ride. They're loving this Betfair chase. Long run, five to four. Corto Star, though, is the horse of the race. Well, I'm joined by uh, Sam Whaley-Cohen. Sam, massive moment here with Long Run coming back as the reigning champion. Yeah, it's a big race, and you've got Corto Star, who's been obviously the hero of, of the last six six seasons and, and you've got all the all the young pretenders trying to steal the crown. The main stumbling block today for Porto Sar is Long Run, the reigning Cheltenham Gold Cup holder, 5-4 favourite. He looks absolutely terrific. And the money is pouring on Long Run. That is a positive. You're not necessarily the underdog anymore. You're not necessarily just the chancer who's making a nice story. You're the one, you're the one to beat. Well, away they go, and uh, Cordo Star is up with the pace right from the outset in the hands of Ruby Walsh. Cordo Star and Long Run almost together. Cordo Star the better jump. Long Run missed it slightly, didn't lose a lot of ground though, but uh, a slightly anxious moment for Sam Whaley Cohen. And again, Long Run was pressurized into a mistake there. Wonderful jump from Cordo Star. Long Run under pressure. Cordo Star from Long Run at the final fence. Jumping this champion horse, the like of which we'll be lucky to see again. Being an amateur this season is about not being paid, but being treated as a professional, which is totally different to last year. It's like shooting fish in a barrel, slagging off the amateur. But once you've won the Gold Cup, once you've, you've been out on the big stage, you really are a fair game. He looks great. He's come on from Haydock, and he needs to have come on from Haydock because we've got a bit of a walloping that day, so we've got to get our own back. Once you start not winning a couple of races, it's all your fault. And everyone says, oh, you ought to replace him. This year, he's had to face defeat. Not disaster, but defeat. And what do you do, walk away? This season has been a bit different because it's about defending your right to, to ride the horse. And that's quite a strange position because never went into racing to get into that sort of politics. When it goes wrong, you're going to look like a fool. And the guys that watch the tapes 10 times go, well, why the hell did he do that? story of this year's, well, maybe, maybe it was all a fluke.
course, I mean, of, of course, it, of course, you, you read it, and, and of course, it hurts, and, and it hurts partly because you wonder whether it's true. year his whole preparation was sort of Corinthian spirit and how great Sam was and the Whaley Cohen family and this year everyone seems to have been quite down on his performances do you feel he's not as good if Sam wasn't as talented as he is then I wouldn't do it as far as I'm concerned it's Sam's ride we're doing it together there is no place for amateurism in professional sport you can't approach it as a joke. You have to approach it in a very clinical, focused, structured way. Second race, jockeys. Time to go on freeze. The big thing is, is that you start to care, and you start to care about the result, not, not the, the journey. And that's where you start to get tense. That's where you start to feel pressure. If I can get in the rhythm, get in the jumping, don't right. worry about the others. Yeah. We know he stays the trip. This is a crunch afternoon for long run. And Sam Whaley Cohen is asking long run to stretch now as they run towards the final fence, but it's not a decisive move. Long run stood off the last, but left handedly stays on now on the run in. Racing up towards the line. This is only going to be workman light if he can get home at all because Burton Port is attacking Long Run. Long Run by half a length to Burton Port. They hit the line. Long Run just prevails. Only just. We want to come here and give the horse confidence, give me confidence. You know, it's been one of those seasons that's had its ups and downs, so it's nice, uh, nice for it to go right. Yeah, someone can confirm that. Yeah, OK, perfect. I, mean, I, I suggest we still go ahead with it anyway, even if it's just bare benders, and we can just say, well, these are the points, just go back to your point. They can get pretty tiring. Um, yeah, every now and then, it's kind of... <sighs> You need a, you just need a, a break, and just to catch your catch your breath and, and let everything just sort of seep over to you. For seven months of the year, I'm I'm exhausted, but 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 excited and, and pushing and going. So, you know, you get up in the morning and you're either uh, trying to do fitness or go riding. Then you've got a full day's work. Then you've got to go riding or do fitness. You know, sometimes you do need a few minutes just to think. You know, my wife would say you never think, and sometimes I think she's probably right because. There's no time to think. It's, it's all action, action, action. So, yeah, here's Nick. How are you doing? Today's a big day. Um, it's the final piece of, of preparation work. It's the final bit of, of, uh, of dangerous work, if you like. Is it? knocking my confidence watching this. <laughs> As a jockey, you're trying to bring two beings together to become one and bring them together at the peak of, of their ability, and that's a challenge. It's not like, uh, it's not like a, a Formula One car where you tune and you run tests. It's about understanding each other. Long Run is, is cocky and confident. He doesn't necessarily respect the fence which is a problem occasionally. Long Ryan just thinks that if it doesn't sort of get out of the way, he's going to gallop through it. And so trying to get the stride right is something that we work on a lot. That's the role of the jockey, is to be the brain and let the horse be the brawn. Long Run might be the greatest horse of, of all time but there have been plenty of horses that might be the greatest horse of all time. The challenge that, that I face is to make sure that 
that I can raise my game to a level that, that matches his. Because not fulfilling potential is, is the worst crime there is. And that is a pressure because while you do it together, you're ultimately the one that's responsible. It's always a big day, um, but I'm ready. I'm ready to go and ride this race. You can't control fate. You can't control what will happen on the day, but you can control how you approach it. And if uh, if there was a way to to prepare yourself that you say, yeah, that that was the best way to go into the race, then so far, touch wood. Not that there is any wood in here. It's gone well. Massive day for these guys. A huge crowd here at Cheltenham. Just seconds now to the Cheltenham Gold Cup. Sam Whaley Cohen having a look round there, and he realises that Corto Star now is out of the race, his big rival. This is long run's big chance. Sam Whaley Cohen, he looks quite confident as they turn towards this open ditch. He's just stalking them at the moment. They head towards the final turn as Sam Whaley Cohen gets to work on long run. Long run is switched, trying to come between them. This isn't over yet. The giant bolster long run synchronised is joining in. He stays so well. He'll You, you've trained for it, you've done everything you possibly can do. There's nothing that you can obviously point to to, to why it hasn't come out and been the success you wanted to. Um, and, and that is, is disappointment. It's difficult to, to keep it in perspective and go, I'm riding an amazing horse, uh, a beautiful horse, uh, a spectacular horse, and, and I'm competing in, in great races, doing something that I absolutely love doing. And then on the flip side, but it's only fun if you win. It's only success if you win. And keeping, um, keeping those bits in, in line is, is really difficult. And uh, you know, you, I, I don't think for a second I managed it um, all year. And, and at times it was fun, at times it was, you know, yeah, this seems like a lot of a lot of noise for 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 something that's just a hobby. For a professional, if it goes wrong, the consequences are very significant. At the end of the day, being an amateur is is to be able to go home with with dad who owns the horse, Nikki who trains the horse, have a beer and go, well that didn't work out. Bollocks. What about next season? The pressure's off. You can get back to fun, you can get back to doing it because what you like doing is, is galloping horses. And actually getting back to the heart of it is probably the way to, to have more fun and, and actually probably the way to, to have more success. It's a sport of fools because mostly your heart is broken, but there's always the possibility. And here comes the long run on the outside. 